S&P 500 and NASDAQ closing at all-time highs. The Dow up, gold up, real estate. Hey everybody, Jake here with TrendSpider to go over another video in the technical analysis series. And today we are going to be focusing on the RSI with Bollinger Bands on the TrendSpider platform. So first things first, how do you add this to your account? All you need to do is go to indicators here, click the three dots, and you'll see uh, this search bar comes up, just type in RSI, and you'll see RSI with Bollinger Bands pops up. Once you've clicked on that, scroll to the bottom and you'll see that it will be popping up within your, uh, within your menu of other indicators that you have on your account. So one thing I'll mention, you always need to click apply in order to lock that in and for it to become an indicator on your indicator list. And so once you click apply, go to your expand indicator list here. And since it already popped up here, you'll see as I turn them off, they will pop back up here. So if I wanna turn it back on, just click on the W, we're on the weekly chart. That's the weekly RSI Bollinger Bands here with the weekly candle. And we'll just go through kind of the different ways to uh, to decipher how this works and, and a few different ways to customize it to your particular color theme and that type of thing. So first things first, if you do wanna change anything with the RSI Bollinger Bands, just right click, go to properties, and you'll see here that you can change the stroke of the lines, you can change the color of the lines, you can change the length of the RSI. So I'm using the eight RSI simply because we're on the weekly chart and I'm looking back eight weeks, so pretty much two months. When I'm using the RSI, I like to use the eight on the weekly chart. When I'm using the daily, I like to use the 10 because there's 10 trading days in two weeks. So I like to look back two weeks, two months, that type of thing. So if you wanna change the Bollinger Band length, you're simply just changing the, um, the SMA for the RSI. So in this case, we're looking back 20 periods on the RSI, and so it's no different than using the uh, the 20 period uh, length for a part a general Bollinger Band, like the, uh, let's say if you're on the daily Bollinger Band, you're looking at the SMA 20, the simple moving average 20, you're looking back 20 days and you're taking the average and that's how you get that length. This is the default on the regular Bollinger Bands, the Bollinger Band up and the Bollinger Band down is just your standard deviations. So the default is two. So that's two standard deviations above the Bollinger Band length, which as I mentioned, is just the 20 period SMA. And then the uh, Bollinger Band down is just two standard deviations below. So the price source is just looking at how that uh, is being calculated. If you're just using the close, that's generally the default as well. You can change this to, uh, to other... Um, kind of formulas here, but I just like to use the close. The right simply means if you were using the raindrop chart, the right VWAP is essentially the close for a raindrop chart. So um, as I mentioned, this is uh, this is how you can kind of change all of the different colors, all of that. Um, you can change the, the thickness of the stroke of the lines through all of these different, um, different things here. Now you can also change the oversold and the overbought uh, lines. So I'll go over that here shortly, but this is just making um, these darker or lighter. So um, the overbought and the oversold lines are just these right here. So anytime that the Bollinger Band uh, is tested to the downside by the RSI, as you can see here, you can see that we close below it, it's going to highlight it in green. And you'll see here a lot of the time, you will see uh, you know the, the uh, RSI getting below this lower Bollinger Band which really uh, kind of is right in line with some of these bottoms here that we saw on, um, on Home Depot over the last couple of years. So um, same thing here, if you look at the Bollinger Band uh, being tested on the upper side when the RSI breaks through it, that's gonna highlight red. So this is not something that's an end all be all indicator. Anytime the Bollinger Band is tested on the downside, by the RSI does not mean it's gonna be a bottom. You definitely want to use this with other indicators and other variables in the equation as well. But it is a great way to just see, you know, is the RSI overextended and not as a function of overbought or oversold with a, a 30 and an 80 threshold. You're using this as more or less, all right, the RSI is actually technically overbought uh, above the upper Bollinger Band or an oversold below the Bollinger Band. So kind of a different way to use that. And as I mentioned, it's it's never going to be a perfect indicator. Notice here, as Home Depot was moving up, you had this red uh, shaded area. 
and you continued to move up for quite some time. So it's definitely something you want to use with, let's say, divergence or something like that. So uh, the, the shaded areas are just when the RSI is below the lower Bollinger Band for green, and the red is just when the RSI is above the upper Bollinger Band for red. So um, one thing you can really keep in mind as well, the, the more expanded these bands get, very similar to price, the more room that you have for the RSI. So as the RSI was starting to move down in March of 2020, you can see that the upper Bollinger Band was also extending up and you can see the range was much bigger than let's say, you know, back in 2019 when the range was a little smaller on this uptrend. So it is a an indicator just like any other indicator that you want to use with other variables depending on what type of strategy you're implementing or type of technical view that you're looking at and so this is uh this is just a great way to look and see you know is the rsi getting a little overheated or is the rsi getting a little um uh, cool uh if you will uh based on more or less standard deviations rather than just looking at you know the oscillator as a zero to 100 threshold with 80 being overbought and then 30 being oversold. So hopefully this video was helpful in understanding a little more about how you can use this. You definitely want to use this with another oscillator, especially let's say something that shows divergence and you can really get an edge in the market using this. If you have any other questions, let us know. Make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy these videos. We try to do them as often as we can and everybody have a great day and thanks for watching.